you and your sister and get that out of the way. Well, Steve, uh, first of all, people here in Minnesota probably don't know enough about speed skiing, so maybe you can fill us in a little bit on that. Well, speed skiing is the original form of ski racing. It is what the miners in the Sierra Nevadas and in the Rockies did for recreation as well as for getting around in the winters. You've seen, a lot of people have seen the, the old photos of miners and their long, long boards and the single pole. Well, they had races back then with purses and everything. And of course, they couldn't have turned anyway. The skis were too long. But uh, it was an organized sport as far back as 1880, and there was a recorded time of 80 miles per hour with a, a miner named Tommy Todd. And then uh, the sport went to Europe, and in 1936, um, annual speed races happened. And uh, now the speeds are up way up over 120. 125.7 is what I did in 1982 in Les Arcs, France. We see some speed in slalom skiing. Compare slalom and speed skiing and the speeds and, and what it takes. What's the difference between the two? Well, slalom is the slowest form of ski racing. You're making the most turns there, but it's very technical. You have to be a very good skier. Um, most people can relate to downhill. They saw Franz Klammer in the 76 Olympics. It's a very famous run. Well, the average speed that he carried on that course was 63 miles per hour. And we're going 125. So double that. Yeah. How about yourself now? Uh, tell us a little bit about you, uh, how your skiing started, and how it evolved to what you're doing now. Um, I was on the University of Colorado ski team. From there, I went on to the United States ski team, and I uh, was one of the better downhillers in the nation. And I still wanted to go faster. There's only one way to go faster than downhill, and that's to go speed skiing. And now, speed skiing is actually the fastest non-powered humans on Earth. You know, that's not counting skydivers because they're not on Earth anyway. But uh, so that's where I am. And I've been, uh, since 1974, I've been speed skiing and I've held five world records. The name McKinney, very familiar with a lot of ski fans uh, because your sister is on the U.S. Olympic ski team. Right. My sister Tamara was the first American woman to win the World Cup in the history of, world, of the World Cup. And she is the top contender for gold at the Sarajevo Olympics. Are you going to go over and watch? Oh boy, I wish that I could, but uh, you know, they keep the athletes behind bars over there anyway. I wouldn't be able to eat dinner with her or maybe wave at her over the crowd or something, <laughs> but I have obligations during that period. I sure will be rooting for her, just like everyone else will. Okay, you talked a little bit about your helmet here and uh, some of the equipment that a speed skier has to wear. Maybe we can just take a closer look at this and you can right. tell us about it. This helmet is uh, just exemplifies the aerodynamic equipment that we use in speed skiing because it very it very much is an, an aerodynamic sport as well as a snow sport. Uh, so the helmet is streamlined. Uh, the, the fins on the top give you stability at high speed. When wind comes through this channel at over 120 miles per hour, it gives you stability and direction. We wear a rubberized suit and the skis are 240 centimeters long, twice as long as a recreational skier's ski and uh, considerably stiffer. The poles are curved around the body. Everything is just down to the last little thread is streamlined. Do you think there's a possibility of going faster or are they at speeds now, are you at speeds now where you can't exceed that speed? No, it just goes faster and faster. Um, it's like when cars were first invented and, and the general populace thought that people would die if they went 30 miles an hour. You know, uh, People thought that the limit for skiing, speed skiing was 115. And then when that was broken, they thought it was 120 and then 125. Now it's obvious that the higher up on the slope you go and the stronger you are and the better the equipment is, you'll go faster. So I think we're looking at 130 miles per hour before too soon. Are you, do you have an obsession to just keep going faster and faster? Is there a certain speed limit you're trying to reach? I'd like to reach 130. Um, and something that I do is something I do well. I have fun at it. It's interesting, keeps me in shape, and I'll keep doing it. Okay, that's all we need. Two shot? I'll give them that. I want to get that, but I want to get a shot of you first. When you're talking about the, those, oh, you, you kind of held it up like that, but, yeah. but, but finger it like you're doing. Oh, you want me to do it like this? Yeah, like yeah. you're talking about that. Just do it like you're doing. Kind of go ahead and turn talk it, about turn it. it towards me. No, the other way. It was the other way. Like this? Like that. It was like that, and you kind of had it cradled. Okay, like this? Hey, okay. just just like you were explaining to Jeff. Just oh, yeah. pretend I'm not even shooting it. Cradle it again, and then turn it again.
did you get your sister into skiing, or did she kind of start on her own? No, our mother, our mother got us into skiing. Our mother was a ski instructor, so her way of babysitting the kids was just to turn them loose. Nice. Okay. You know, a lot of people may wonder what's, uh, try it again. You know, a lot of people may wonder what's behind a guy's desire to go down a hill at 125, at over 120, behind a person's desire. Okay. You know, a lot of people may wonder what's behind a person's desire to fly down a hill at over 125 miles per hour. Well, for Steve McKinney, it began here on the ski jump. Dealt uh, going in that uh, you had a full house, but uh, it certainly didn't end up that way because of injuries. Well, <clears throat> you know, if you looked at our game uh, compared to our lineup uh, at the end of the game, at the end of the season, with the one we started the season with, uh, you know, a lot of changes. But uh, you know, we got large squads, and some of the players developed, and uh, we missed uh, some of the skills, some of the experience that we had. But uh, I think everybody had injuries of some kind or another, and ours just caught up to us to the point we didn't make the playoffs.